Oh, hi everyone, we are at the City Live store in Westfield, London. With me is Roberto, the CTO of C2. Right. So tell us, Roberto, about yourself, about your experience, and how how did you get started with C2 Live? So my background is purely digital. I've worked in the digital industry for over 30 years. I was working back before the days of the internet in a fairly small community of creative technologies, producing interactive content, connecting computers to video discs for training, education, entertainment. And then the internet came along and I started one of the first digital agencies back in the mid 90s, worked with a lot of tech and consumer global brands, helping them with their digital strategies and their content. I've worked on quite a number of startups and I was working on one back in 2018, 2019. And I met the founder of Tattoo Live and we kind of swapped notes on what we were doing with our startup project, which is about helping consumers understand and choose consumer technology. And obviously he was keen on the whole retail, physical retail side of things and how we could make a difference there. And we kind of joined forces and I helped shape what has become Situ Live as a business today. Amazing. How would you describe Situ Live to a consumer that's hearing about it for the first time? So we're very much a place to come and experience new innovative technology. So it could be you know, products from brands that you've heard of, but maybe not aware of some new, new, new products that you wouldn't traditionally see in, in, in normal retail. So some of their newer products, or it could be from new brands. There's a lot of online brands out there that, that are finding it difficult these days to get exposure online and there's a lot of new tech a lot of new categories that you're maybe not even aware of so we give those brands the opportunity to get that in front of consumers so consumers can come have a nice you know couple of hours in the in the store discover new things and then we encourage them to take that 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 information that, that you know, what they've learned about those products home and then at some point in the future when they're ready to buy we're there to help them make those choices and, and make those decisions on the right products that, that suit them. Amazing. And how would the brand understand Teach Your Life? So we're, we're really a new way, a new almost a new marketing channel mm -hmm. for brands to get their products into the hands of consumers, particularly what I call high consideration brands that they're not products that you would buy on impulse. They tend to mm -hmm. be quite expensive family purchases. They're quite complex technology. Uh, or as I said, there may be a new category that, that they're trying to launch into the market. And we have created effectively a, a, a platform with three components. One is a you know, live physical venues that people can visit and we create an entire experience. So our, our venues, that we, we call them venues, not stores, because we're, we're trying to make it more, more a form of entertainment and marketing. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we encourage shoppers to come in and have those experiences and brands can place their products within our experiences. We hire a, a really, really talented and passionate team of people who not only are able to demonstrate the products, but they, you know, they've got expertise and can really bring the products to life with storytelling. So the brands get the opportunity to place their products in that environment and in that content and those stories. And then we have a digital platform to enable the path to purchase. We don't sell the products directly. We've done a lot of work to look at what is the best bit from an online perspective. And online does a very good job from a transactional point. Mm -hmm. So we created a digital platform that connects our venues to our online marketplace. So shoppers can come in and we have technology throughout the store where they can scan QR codes and that connects them through our digital platform to the marketplace where we then direct the shopper to the brand's direct stores or to their online retailers. So you have completely reinvented the customer experience in a store or in a shopping mall. How do you see the customer experience improving in the future for C2? Are you seeing anything in the data of how customers navigate and, and how do you report to brands the engagement of the products inside the store? Yeah, I think I, we, we like to think we've probably set the benchmark now of, of what and you can pretty much look at every industry analyst has been saying for the last five or more years that retail really needs to use its strengths, which is all of our experience and creating emotional connections with, with shoppers. And that's really what we're trying to, we're trying to do here at, at, at City Live. And you're right, we are, data is really key to what we're doing behind the scenes. I mean, at the end of the day, we don't sell the product or it's not part of our business model. Our business model is really bringing those products to life and creating the leads to the, the, the brand's existing sales channels. So we're really about data. It is about how do we get people into the door? How do we track that? How do we use the data to monitor and um, manage the performance of the business, manage the performance 
on behalf of our brands, track what people are doing, generating the leads back to the brands. Every brand partner of ours, that they, they pay a monthly subscription mm -hmm. to access, to, to place their products in our venue, on our platform. And as part of that, that subscription plan, they get an analytics dashboard, which is able to report back to them on all the things I've just, you know, just mentioned in terms of leads and traffic and dwell time. And, and who's looking at their products and how and, and what particular themes and topics that, that may be resonating well with consumers. Mm. It does help that the store is also structured in, in a zone kind of way. So different That's products right. are, are set up in different parts of the home. It was that done on purpose? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We're, we, you know, we, I guess our core mission is to try and help people lead a, a better life every day. And we really looked at the themes and topics that would resonate with people. So, you know, getting fitter, feeling healthier, how to travel better, how to work more effectively, all the things that you know, people are trying to improve in their lives. And then we design the venue around those concepts. So we have a nutrition kitchen where we've got, we've got a resident chef who, who you know, cooks recipes every day using the products from our brand. We've got a fitness studio that people can actually do workouts in. We've got a, an area to focus on travel products, on working from home. We've got a connected home so you can see how products, not only how do we demonstrate individual products from specific brands, but how do they all work together? Which is, a, you know, these are all things that consumers are struggling with. Is, you know, how, do, how do I fit these products into my life? How are they going to improve my life? What do I need to know? And which ones are the right ones for me? Yeah. And, and what are the data points that you would recommend for a retailer watching this video, for example, that they should be looking at if they were to improve their customer experience to understand what actions to take? Um, I understand that creating these kind of experiences has to be data driven. Yeah. It has yeah. to lead eventually into the traditional retail sense, into conversions. So what do you recommend based on your experience for them to look at first? Yeah, I mean, I can tell you about what we're doing specifically because we're, we're, you know, we're not, we're not selling product on the day. So a lot of the traditional metrics from from retail, we've kind of moved away. From. It's all about experience and what do we, how do we measure those and, and, and measure against experiences. We do things like we've got a lot of activities that go in the the the, the window, the live activation. So we're looking at. How do we convert the passing traffic into the venue? So mm -hmm. conversions like that will 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 kind of be used as a measure of what's happening at the front of the front of the venue. We do a lot of work with purchase intent. So it's, it's really about as as for all marketing channels, it's how fast, how can we accelerate people along that buying journey? Mm -hmm. And we're really here to help brands do that job. So raising awareness of brands or products that people have not, 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 not seen before. So how do we move them along that journey? We want to inspire them. So how do we get people excited and interested in the product? And as they are quite, you know, quite long buying cycles, a lot of these products, because they're quite expensive and you know, technology products, not everyone is ready to buy in the moment. So it's how do we maintain that relationship with people so that we're there for them when they're ready to buy. So how do we maintain, how do we capture data in such a way that we can start that relationship with people, create the content to keep that going and measure over time whether people start engaging and converting through to a lead and then ultimately to a sale on behalf of the brands. So we're doing all, we're measuring all of that. So we do a lot of work in the store to look at um, down to sort of almost product level, how many people have stood and spent, dwelled in front of a, a brand's products and we're able to report that back to the brands so they can see which products and which areas of the venue were popular. We track obviously when people scan a QR code and they come onto our platform, we can then track all the way through to, to the leads to the brands so we report that back to the brands as well. So we're using all those metrics really to measure not, not only our performance but the performance of the brands and how we report back to them. Okay, perfect. My next question would be, what type of data are you tracking to improve your customer experience? And how often do you do that? So we're obviously working with Aurovision that we use the Aura AI vision systems to track, like I say, the, the passes by, the peel rate into the venue. And then we track within each zone within the, within the venue, how many people come in, how long they spend with, with the products. Um, we track QR code scans, we track the number of demos that the crew give to shoppers. Each interaction, we try to uh, garnish some information back from the, from, from the shoppers mm -hmm. in terms of their purchase intent, so how likely that they're, they're going to consider that product and that brand next time they're paying, buying from that category, which all gets reported back to the brand. So they're all things that we're using to help us 
understand performance and improve what we're doing for that. For the so you later. you really are omni-channel. So you've managed to adopt digital and and physical data into one to create the ultimate experience for for a customer. That's 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 amazing, and that's what. I think every retailer should be doing at this point. What do you think are the barriers to having or creating such customer experience? For, for, other, for other traditional retailers, retailers yeah. I think the problem we found with traditional retailers, they're kind of tied into the business model and it mm -hmm. is all about sales. It's about, and it's very difficult for them to break out that model and, and, and create one new. So we've kind of had the opportunity to start from scratch and think it through from, from scratch. And I think that's one of the problems that traditional retailers, they, they tend to have done, experiences tend to be around the fringes of what they're doing. They're kind of add-ons, they're things that they try and do in store alongside the, almost the mentality of selling. So their sales teams will, will work and operate in a certain way because you know they need to make the sales because that's how they make their revenue. But it drives a certain behavior where we've, We've sort of stepped away from that a little bit so it just gives us the opportunity to focus on purely the experience and as i said by by looking at what's good about online versus what retail spaces should be about it meant we could take out a lot of the cost to us of we haven't got any point of sale systems we've got you know got no stock we've got so we can purely focus on the experience whereas traditional retail has got all that uh, mm. to deal with as well for us it, it the Experience is centered from people, even though my, my role is technology, we're all about people first. You know, it is about creating emotional connections. The technology should be there to enable that to happen, not be front and center about the technology. Mm. And I, I feel that's what consumers do uh, want to see in brands today. We, we tend to, of course, online shopping is on the rise, but we would want to go and actually move to a separate physical footprint of a brand to experience it not necessarily for the product but you want to have a good time exactly um, yeah. yeah well you've seen the rise of you know experiential marketing and there's, you know, exactly. there's, there's a lot of agencies serving brands on that behalf and in some ways brands are having to do those sorts of things because they're not getting what they want or need from traditional re traditional retail mm. so they are spending money on experiential pop-ups they're building their own stores they're there so they can control that experience because they're not getting what they need from traditional retail mm. so yeah the need the need is there and i think brands have recognized that quite some time ago that they need to create those emotional connections and you know build the advocacy and the loyalty that, that they need to, to 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 keep and mm. grow their consumer base yeah yeah that's definitely the trend and it's i see it a lot in luxury retail yeah. i've seen on the news recently chanel has been testing vip shops so they would have a pop-up shop in a yeah. city or in a luxury hotel exactly. and then would have people come in there for it's like an event uh, it's less of a store it's more of an, uh, yeah, an yeah, experience yeah, yeah that's uh, actually yeah. harry harry selfridge gets mentioned a lot from the you know the, the, the turn of the last century it's really that's what he came you know created these emporiums of places that people came and spent time in you know it was it was all about experience and gradually over the years we've, we've kind of moved away from that it's all become kind of all a sort of race to the bottom a little bit in terms yeah. of just about margin and, and yeah. the experience I think has suffered from that and obviously like I said earlier the impact of online has dented that further but you know shoppers are craving it. Yeah exactly. Where do you see retail going in the next five to ten years or physical retail? How do you see it becoming? I think it has to you know it mm. has to move in the direction that you know we're, hopefully we're leading a little bit of the way uh, we'd like to think uh, if they're even if they're going to survive let alone thrive you know it, 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 they have to focus on, on on the experience and almost leave the trans i mean you know a lot of them are controlling uh, online platforms as well this kind of focus on the bits that and the strengths that each different touch point has um, and physical retail like we said it's it, it, it is there for that emotional connection and the, the bond with people the understanding of the brand getting across the, the provenance and the, you know, the details behind the story behind the brands and, and why people should buy into them. Okay, perfect. So I'm, I'm going to ask you a question that I will cut and then put in another segment. But what are some of the brands that Situ Live works with? So we're, it's mainly the, the brands we work with is mainly high consideration brands, innovative brands. Like I said, they've got, they tend to be usually higher purchase items that you know, an expensive family, family buys. Mm -hmm. 
or they're complex, they've got complex technology in them, or they're, they're, they're really new to market with a new category. So we're working with like, some of the traditional brands, you know, people like Bosch sponsor our kitchen. They've got some of the traditional products that you would expect to see, albeit they've got some really great technology they're building that you don't necessarily realize that's inside some of the products, even buying an oven. You know, it can be quite a complex purchase these days when you look at some of the things they're building into those types of categories. But they've got really interesting things that, that, that have not been seen before. So it's kind of almost with those types of brands, it's helping them show show shoppers that there are other arms, there are other categories, there are other things that they're doing. And then, we're, you know, for, for them, it's, it's, it is a lot about the experience. It's about the brand. It's about how do you communicate that? And then we've got kind of at the, the other end of the spectrum, much smaller brands that are more maybe, you know, even down at sort of Kickstarter startup brands, they've maybe come out of several rounds of investment. They've got a great product that's doing really well online, but they're starting to find that the costs of trying to market things online is ever increasing and physical's actually becoming quite an attraction to them. But for them to get their product into physical retail is incredibly risky, incredibly expensive. And we almost offer a a quick and easy way of getting their products into a physical space. It's a fully managed service at a price point and flexibility that would suit that type of brand. And makes it really good from a customer experience point of view because then people are coming in not only seeing the traditional brands that they're used to seeing and, and trust and respect, but they've got all these new, really interesting, cool brands that they maybe wouldn't see in other retail spaces. That's, that's amazing. And do you see C2 Live opening other venues in the future? Absolutely, yeah. We've got, you know, this, this, this is almost our testing ground for getting the model right and then, and then we plan to scale that out to uh, at least what, 10, 10, 15 venues, certainly within the UK and if not internationally in the next few years. Amazing.